Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. I apologize first of all, there's been a little bit of a break since my last tutorial. Working in high school, inevitably I got coronavirus, so I've just been a little bit poorly. I'm fine now, I'm on the mend, but I just need to take a week out, just have a bit of a rest and recuperate fully. But we're back now and we're going to do a tutorial of a fall or an autumn tree. So we're gonna get some really nice orange, reds and yellows in there. Keep it quite simple, quite impressionistic really. And we're just gonna use the app Procreate. So I've opened the default A4 canvas and the brushes I'm going to be using, I've got the artistic section of brushes and what's called the hearts brush. I'm not going to amend it or modify it in any way, it's just the brush that comes free with Procreate. And then also the airbrushing section, I'm going to use the, the medium brush. Maybe the medium hard brush, but certainly the medium brush. In terms of the colors, I've got some pre-selected colors here, just clear. So I've got these seven colors. If you look down in the description of this video, you'll find that there are some hexadecimal codes that you can jot down and you can put them into the value section here, one at a time to piece it together. But there's also a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file there for free. You'll also find links for my Facebook group and my Instagram. So if you have a go following along with this tutorial or any other of my tutorials, then make sure to share them with me in those places. Okay, without further ado, the first thing I'm going to do is go to my layers, go to the background color. I'm going to select this first color that I have. So if I just tap on that, then it fills the background with this nice bluey. It's very pale, but it's got a bluey gray background as you can see in the color wheel. Okay, so on layer one, we're gonna to go to our brushes, to our medium hard brush. I'm gonna put it at around 3% size, 100% opacity. I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna select this black color. And I'm just gonna start building in. Now it's gonna go off the bottom of the, pe the canvas. So you're not gonna see the ground and it's also gonna go slightly off the top of the canvas as well. So we're not painting an entire landscape here. We're just trying to create a focal point of a tree. Really just concentrating on that for this tutorial. So don't worry too much about this tree shape. Now, I, I do realize that tree shapes can be quite tricky. We're just gonna get something of like a tree trunk in here. And, you know, these shapes can be difficult. So just have a go. Remember that these shapes get narrower, or the branches rather get narrower as they grow along. Have the practice. Even if you find a image of a silhouette of a, a tree, like a winter tree, so all it is is the branches. If you can find that on the internet and just practice applying foliage to it so you can master these techniques, that's perhaps a good way of starting on this. But I'm just gonna quickly run through, put a basic structure in place. I'm not gonna add every single branch because I can always go back in and add some branches after the fact because we're gonna cover a lot of these branches up with foliage anyway. So there's no point going to too much detail with every single branch because much of it is gonna be covered up. But we'll get the essence of it, just the, the main structure. I'm gonna turn the brush size down to the lower end of 2%, in fact. We'll get some of the main points of the branches, just so we know where to start adding some of the, the leaves, really. So we're gonna have some branches to go all the way to the very top, off the top of the canvas. Not too many, just one or two. And then as you go back, perhaps just make sure that you're thickening it up as it comes further down towards the bottom. No worries if it's a little bit rough, we'll go in there and we'll fine tune and just fix it if necessary. Alternate the brush up and down. If you wanna get some thicker shapes in there, then go for it. Okay. It's not gonna look great until we start adding some foliage to it anyway, so don't expect this stage to look particularly impressive or nice even. But we're gonna keep increasing the effect once we add foliage to it. And like I say, if we get any gaps in the foliage, then we can always just fill it in and just add a couple more branches in there. So maybe I'll just add a couple of branches over this side, turn it down a little bit more again. Something like that will do for now a structure that we can build upon. So once we've got a basic framework in place, we are going to create another layer. On um, the layer that's immediately above the tree now, we can tap that layer. It opens some different options. We're going to select the clipping mask so that now we anything we add onto this new layer 
will only be applied in the areas that correspond to the layer that it's connected to underneath. So for example, if I was to start adding yellow on this new clipping mask layer, it can only add it into the sections where we have shapes on the layer that it's attached to. But we're not going to add yellow. We're gonna be a bit more subtle than that. We're gonna go back to our colors, we're gonna use this brown. We'll actually go to our airbrushing and use the soft brush. And I'm gonna put it at around 10% size and 100% opacity. And I'm just gonna apply that brown color to about two thirds of the way down like this. And then also gonna change my color to the red on the next layer. And I'm just gonna do that to about a third of the way down. Then we're gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer, and we're just gonna blur it across 100%. Now for zoom in now, you'll see it's got some of that red at the top, but then it quickly becomes brown and then it becomes black at the lower section, which is great for what we need for our effect. We're gonna go back to our layers. We're going to add another layer. We're gonna put the layer underneath everything else now so it's layer three but now it's at the bottom we're going to go to our brushes we're going to select the artistic brushes and the hearts brush and i'll just show you this texture here you can use it in a tapping motion it's quite expressive quite painterly we're going to continue using this red color but we're going to put it down to about five percent size and about 80 percent opacity and i'm going to concentrate on this lower section to begin with and I'm just gonna start building in some background foliage and I'm doing this in a tapping motion. And I'm allowing left to right clumps of foliage to start to gather and form blocks really. But I obviously want to keep it relatively broken. I don't want it to be an ugly mass where it's not letting any light through like that. It needs to be more textured, more broken, we want to see some of the sky coming through from the background as well. So keep it quite broken. You don't want it all completely in stripes like this. It's going to look a bit ugly. So have it in clumps that almost gather like rounded shapes too. Think about where the branches are, where is it going to gather more foliage perhaps. We don't want to overdo this because we're going to be adding colors and textures over the top as well. But this is just going to form almost like a shadowed area that's perhaps within the middle of the tree or slightly to the back of it. And that's the, the emphasis of this color. Okay, so we're going to go back to our colors. We're going to use this next color, this orange color. And we're going to reserve that for the same effect on the same layer, but it's going to be nearer the top section. Now, thinking of this or the thought process behind this is that as we get further up in the tree it's going to get more light hitting it slightly less shadowed so you're going to get some warmer lighter colors coming through and you can just bring those down a little bit into this midsection too again keep it quite broken you can have some clumps that amass but keep it quite loose Remember, this is only creating an, an expressive or an impressionistic effect, really. This isn't going to be photographic, but it's going to create an easy way of creating the effect of foliage without having to draw each and every individual leaf. So we can bring some of this orange color a little bit lower, but not too much. Okay, so I'm going to go to my top layer and I'm going to create another layer. And you can see I've just started using this color, which is not the yellow color on the end, it's the next one in. We're still using the hearts brush within the artistic section. We're just going to continue using this brush for the foliage effect, but we're now applying it over the top of the branches. So that's why this layer is on top. So we've not changed the settings. It's still on 5% size and 80% opacity. But now I can just start applying this really nice orange color over the top. Now, remember I said it didn't really matter how much detail you went into with the branches because precisely what we're doing now, we're starting to completely obscure them, cover them up. Now I'm keeping it in quite a tapping motion, as you can see. I don't wanna just go left and right like this and completely create an unbroken band across it. I want to keep it textured and broken. The actual brush itself is quite good and it has a broken edge to it, but the addition of a, a tapping motion 
like a pointerly effect really helps with a better effect. And I can allow this orange to come down to the lower part of the tree, certainly. It is in the foreground, so therefore we're seeing the light hit it more. It's not so much in the shadow. And this is quite an easy effect. I mean, you don't need to spend hours creating this kind of effect. It can pretty much form itself quite quickly and you get the impression, you get the impact of it pretty quickly. Which is great because especially if you wanted to create a, a whole scene that had lots of autumn trees, then you wouldn't want to be spending too long necessarily on each and every individual tree. So this is a great technique, a great effect. If you just want to create an impressionistic look with lots of different trees, then actually you can do that manually and it can look really effective. Okay, so we'll go now to this yellow color on the end and especially now at the top of the tree, we can start building up some of this lighter color. Now it's a slightly stylized tree, perhaps it's slightly exaggerated in terms of the range of colors, but that's okay. We're creating art, not necessarily a slavish rendition of a photograph. But just think carefully about where you're applying it. We're applying it mainly at the top because this is where most of the, the light is hitting it and we can allow it to form perhaps bigger clumps in certain areas. But if you're starting to like a section, then don't go in and just completely destroy it. Think about what you've already created. If it's kind of working in an area, then just start to slow down, observe what you're applying and just think about what you can add to the image rather than just getting carried away. So it's easy to get carried away, so just think carefully before you add. And you can bring a touch of this yellow down into the bottom section perhaps, but be it really, although we've got an 80% opacity, pressing lightly will help build up the effect. You don't have to be pressing on hard all the time. So you can use a combination of obviously the opacity plus pencil pressure. And you can go back in with other colors. So you can go back in with the orange if you feel like you want to just add a bit more of that in places as well. If you don't feel like you've quite got enough of a certain color, you can go back to another layer. We'll think about the layer that's underneath and you can see the impact that the shadow has created. We can go back to that layer in fact. We can use the colors that are here, like the orange, so not the darkest red, but the orange. And we can go back in and we could even create some slight more shadow in areas that go a little bit higher up. A touch more of that in places perhaps is gonna really help. We can shut down some areas. If we feel like there's just too much light in some areas, we can just obliterate some of the, the gaps. We can shut some of that down. There's no reason we can't be a bit more brutal now. We can also go back to the branch layer that we've created. And if we do have gaps and we want to start adding more of the branches in, and we can do that. So we can go, perhaps I would use the brown color. We can go to the airbrushing and maybe the medium hard brush. We can turn the size of the brush quite low to about 1%, put it 100% opacity, and you start to get some of these finer branches just coming through. You can add more of them. If you feel like there's areas where perhaps you, f you, know, you think you actually would notice more of the branches, then now's the time to start adding them in. make it look more complex, why not? Now, especially if you have quite a, a large area where you've got quite a lot of foliage, but you've not got many branches up there, perhaps you need to just add one or two more branches just to explain really how those areas of foliage are supported. You're not gonna be able to get lots of leaves without branches to connect to them, obviously. One of the reasons I wasn't concerned about getting into too much detail with the branches earlier on is that we have covered most of them up. There's gonna be some areas perhaps where you can see them a bit more now, so we can go back in and we can just fine tune only for the areas that we actually can now still see.
we can go back in with the lower layer. I'm just gonna start using some of the, the darker colors just to build up the effect. Make sure you've switched back to the artistic and hearts brush, obviously. I'm gonna amplify the effect of some of these shadowed areas. Just go back in. If I feel like I need to add a bit more of it here and there. Just some little patchy bits here, perhaps at the lower part of the tree. It's gonna be kind of in the background, very much in a shadowed area. So we can keep it as that nice dark red color. Perhaps I can expand the shape of it over here because it feels like it's gone a little bit this kind of shape. So I'm just trying to bring some of the mass and the bulk of it down into this lower section as well. It's always important to try and consider the overall shape. I think that's balancing it a little bit better. Then I'm gonna to go to the orange color again, second color, add a bit more of it for the higher up areas. Again, it's behind the branches, so I'm not destroying any of the branches. It's also obviously behind the lighter colors that I've added later on as well. Obviously, if you long press on the eraser and then you select the eraser, you'll notice that it's the same brush now for the eraser. So if you wanted to, you could even go in there and remove Let's maybe just match the size of the brush to the eraser, so 5%. If you wanted to create more gaps, then you can go in and do that too. It might be that perhaps I wanna create a bit more of a gap up there, up here. And I'm only removing the background layer. This is the layer that's behind all the branches so far. And then I'm gonna go back up to my layers. I'm gonna use the lightest color that I have, this yellow color. And I'm just gonna reduce it down to about 3% size and I'm just gonna be a bit more careful now and just really create some of that broken texture. So I'm just trying to create some slightly more texture in there as well. Again, some of this lighter color at the very top. You can afford to bring it down a touch here and there, but don't get too carried away in the lower sections. It's nice to have that contrast, I think. Again, go in with some of the orange and we can once again alternate between the yellow and the orange too. Just going to go back in a little bit, not too much. I'm going to go back in with my airbrushing, my medium hard brush, put it at the 2% size, 100% opacity. Just adding some, whoops, I need to go back to the black color. I'm just gonna add just some slight fine tuning to the edge of that tree trunk, just to tidy it up. But essentially, I think the effect is there. Maybe a broken branch. Okay, I'm gonna leave that tutorial there at that point. I hope it's been useful. I hope it's given you some sense of how to build layers and depth of texture within something like this autumn tree, or this fall tree. If you've enjoyed following along, make sure to subscribe hit that like button, that thumbs up button, it really helps the channel out. And I hope to catch you back here soon. See you later.